get this cord off of me. And it was an interesting message when I came upstairs to my computer yesterday, so let's make sure that everything's okay. Maybe a Microsoft update did something a little bit weird. And also let's make sure we're on. Refresh it, refresh it. And there's one we let's let's get warmed up. There was one thing I did forget. Um, that uh, on my Discord there was uh, there was something dropped that I totally forgot about last month. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that in real quick, and we'll do a little warm up. Hmm. Well, oh, pixel logic. That would be why. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna assume I on. Uh, okay, so this is on my Discord here, so we'll go ahead and check it out. We got a cool bird head. I'm gonna turn off perspective because generally I sculpted that perspective on. So we'll do a quick warm up where we can kind of check this out. So I'm going to turn on the, all these eyeballs, see what we got working. And this is a Plague Doctor and kind of cool, like all bird sculpt with a little little chubby body here. Very interesting. I like it. So we have this here and I'm going to go through. So this looks like it's Dynamesh. No, it's a Ziri meshed um, with quite enough, uh, you know, quite a bit of detail on here. So what I'm going to do is if, if this was going to be something I was going to put a costume on, the very first thing I would do is go through here and just kind of move these arms out a little bit. Just give myself a little bit more playing room here. And I guess the easiest thing to do might be hold down control and go in here and say mask lasso. And let's grab this armpit here, control tap, and then move this out. And the other thing I would do is uh, right now it's all one subdivision level. So when I'm when I'm going through and I'm kind of, you know, putting detail on here, I like to certainly on organic things have subdivision history so that I can go through and kind of modify this. So this one, uh, for example, is Dynamesh. This one looks like it was Ziri meshed uh, with subdivisions, but I can't reconstruct. So for example, what I would do is we have no history on this thing, but I can go through here and I can Ziri mesh this. So I'm going to say let's Ziri mesh target polygon count of I guess five is okay. Adaptive size down quite a bit. And we'll just hit zero measure. Now we may want to keep some groups on here now that I think about it. So let's do that. Let's group this thing up just so we can control these edge loops a little bit more. So I'm going to go in here and turn off a line on my poly group. And we're just going to mask some concentric rings on our mesh here. And let's go into our edge loop mask border. It's going to be under your um, poly group menu here. Actually, let's undo that. Let's grab this one here, control alt tap here, and basically what I'm looking for is just concentric rings. Now if I want to do this um, a little bit faster, what I can do is edge loop mask border, and then I can grab this interior one. We're going to say auto groups, do a quick geometry, modify topology, mirror and weld. I'm going to grab these two outside ones, control W, and now we've got those concentric rings. And I think one more concentric ring should do it. And what I mean by concentric rings is if I can make zero mesher follow these, uh, if I put any more rings outside of this, it should, um, when it gives me the geometry, the edges flowing along these kind of edges of my geometry will give me a little bit more of a predictable result. So if I wanted to close these eyelids or I wanted to open and close this mouth, uh, I would want a ring around that in order to do that, again, predictably. So I'm going to do another uh, edge loop mass border, and then we'll do another auto groups, and we'll do another grouping here. There we go. So now we've got this. And if you wanted to do them around the nostrils, I suppose you could. Uh, or on the back of the head is usually another good one on the bottom of the neck. There we go. So we can go through here. And if you wanted to smooth these out a little bit more, you can mask those polygroups. Or sometimes what I prefer to do is go in here to brushes, A, B, um, brushes. And then we're going to go to smooth. And in here, there is a smooth groups. Okay, and now we can go through here and we hold down shift 
and then wherever we have polygroups here, it'll smooth that line between our polygroups. So uh, they weren't bad because edge loop mask border generally like does a slice through. Uh, depending on the resolution of your mesh, it may be a little more or less aliased. Uh, but now that we got that, we can turn our line back on. And then when we go in here to zero mesh, we're going to say keep groups. This group's already smooth, so I'm going to turn that down to zero. And we're going to do a target poly. Uh, that's fine. Hey everybody, uh, my streaming schedule is first Tuesday of the month I do Pixelogic, and then the first Thursday of the month I do have Mike, uh, or my YouTube channel, or my Facebook. And this is looking okay, so let's go in here, let's go back once, this is my detailed quote unquote. So we're going to control click that one, and then as I'm going, I'm going to go over here to project history, and um, just kind of make sure I... Um, we don't need the color, but just the geometry gets projected back. Because we're going to do another Ziri mesh, half. And I'm going to drop this down as low as I can. And I may go down here to Ziri mesh and hold down Alt and Ziri mesh to get a new midline. And I think this is OK. So we'll do another quick project history. And then I'm going to do, let's do a crease PG temporarily. So I'm going to hit Control D and then do another project history. Control D, do another project history. And now I'm going to do an uncrease all. Project history, control D, project history. So now I have uh, all my details back and I have subdivisions. So now what I can do is have a little bit of an easier time, you know, two things, making UVs for this and then also like if I need to modify any primary, secondary forms, I can always drop down in subdivision history and it'll give me a much nicer sculpting surface uh, while I'm going through and um, you know, it's, it's all quads, basically, so uh, it's, it'll be a much more predictable mesh and uh, just makes it a little bit more usable. So now that I have this, uh, I can go through here and we can start detailing it up. So I don't really have any, um, let's see what this is, oh, that's the beak in through here, so I'm just going to move that in. Uh, but it's all broken up very nicely, this is essentially how I would break it up. You know, I may even break this bottom beak from the top beak just so I can get in there a little bit easier. Um, while I'm sculpting, and even this crease line, if this is going to be a natural line or it's going to be covered up by something, um, that wouldn't be that hard to, you know, fix up or anything like that. So now that we have this, uh, going in here with my Damien Standard brush, we can kind of punch some of this in. If you need to, you can also go down to Display Properties and say um, Flip, and you can go through here. If you really want to pull in some of these creases, go into your Damien Standard brush and hold down Alt, and you can really just pull back through this geometry and get these deep, deep. Because um, now that it's Ziri mesh, you don't need to worry about like dynameshing it and having it uh, stick together or anything like that. So really, kind of go through and pull this geometry over, and then also go through and you know, let's hold down Control and mask lasso. We can pull these forward. So we'll go ahead and mask this out, and then we'll just take this and kind of push and pull this in. So you get a nice, nice fold uh, over that uh, geometry. Now it may give you a little bit of trouble when you go to like basic, bake displacement maps and stuff like that. Uh, but just for sculpting and getting that nice uh, overlap of forms, that's a easy way to do that. So yeah, go through here. And at this point, you're just going through and uh, I'm going to kind of push the contrast, quote unquote, on this, and it's not necessarily that you need to necessarily push in. Uh, sometimes it's a building out process. We're going to go through here, and we're going to kind of, you know, just kind of push and pull these forms a little bit and get that read. And I don't have any reference for this, so I'm just kind of going through and making value judgments just based on what I see here. Uh, and I would do the exact same thing on this mesh. So now let's go ahead and turn off smooth groups. I'm just going to go back into smooth. And so now I'm on this one, and this one um, doesn't have subdivision history. Even if this is a DynaMesh, this isn't um, a bad resolution at all. So even if I was working on DynaMesh, this would be at the resolution I'd probably be at for this stage of the detailing, which is like I got most of my forms here. So I'm going to go through, and um, so here's where the striations would go. And not that he would necessarily have, you know, be super ripped or anything like that, but just kind of giving. Uh, an indication. So when I go through here and start kind of pumping these up here along the sternum, um, it, it would make some semblance of sense. So you know, you can start here and then I'm going to hold down shift, turn down my Z intensity, and let's knock this back a bit. And then you go in here with your clay brush or your clay build up, drop your Z intensity down, and uh, you can kind of go through here and you know start building up your forms knock them down. And again, it's just all about like 
you know, where your overlaps are going to be and where your the contrast between your volumes are going to be and any bony landmarks are going to be sharp and then any ligaments are going to be straight and any muscles are going to muscle bodies um, and you got this little divot in here and it's if it's a soft transition you can use the standard brush it's a little bit of a harder transition you can use the uh, Damien standard brush and then as far as build up if you want a softer build up clay brush is good for that if you want a little bit of a um, a flatter build up you can use the clay brush or the clay build up and uh, if you want to really kind of push like this for example going back here and being like you know generally speaking there's a the muscle body so it's going to be round here and then over here it's going to be a ligament so it's going to be flat and if we're going to ridge so I'm just going to take trim dynamic or H polish and push this back here and and again you know if we want to kind of dig this in a little bit we can have those are those three heads, the triceps through here, and then again that ligament. And it, it probably wouldn't go to a corner like this, but it would have a nice flat back here. So you can kind of go through and kind of dig that in a little bit. And then the corner of your elbow here, you can kind of build this up. And then again, go back in here with trim dynamic. And now you may be thinking, boy, that looks a little bit stylized. And it is, but you can always go back in here. And now that you've found your forms, you can go back in and smooth out, you know, where where it probably wouldn't have super hard edges and then that'll just kind of build up and on the inside of the so we've got our humerus in here so this is your olecranon of your um, ulna and then on here you've got your uh, medial and your yeah those heads of the humerus on either side here to kind of bump that out a little bit and uh, yeah so it's basically you know the, there's nothing in here I'd really fix or anything this is just more of just kind of a, a pass where I go through and indicate a little bit stronger you know where my my volumes are going to be through here it's your extensors and um, <clears throat> yeah pecs and it's got kind of an interesting <laughs> um, Boy, he's got a little, some serious pelvic tilt here, uh, which again might be a stylistic choice. So go through here, and I might broaden this out a little bit, and then kind of tuck this in. And not that it has to be human anatomy, although it is like a human body. You can play around with, you know, what you're trying to message to the user. So, you know, if this guy had wings, maybe, you know, wherever wings would attach, you, you may, or his 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 rib cage might even be bigger because birds have. Uh, you know, they, they, they take in a lot of air, and I think their their lungs are set up quite a bit differently than ours, they're a little bit more efficient. So maybe I'd look at some bird anatomy and maybe lean into that a little bit, but um, yeah, he's got a nice creature look. <laughs> yeah, I, sorry about that, it took me so long to get this model. I, uh, I downloaded it and then it was, I just noticed it in my download folder this morning. Uh, how do you find ZBrush Vanilla? Do you prefer custom? Um, <clears throat> I like ZBrush Vanilla, so when I'm doing demos, I can kind of just go through and point out like where the average user would find their stuff when they're just starting out. Uh, but I do have my custom stuff. I do have drop some custom stuff in here just to make things a little bit easier. So when I'm demoing, uh, I'm not having to kind of dig through, um, dig through, um, a bunch of menus all the time you know this this tool menu and especially has so much stuff in it that it can be a little bit difficult to navigate sometimes but you know if you find yourself using the same things over and over again uh, if you go to my station page here the ZBrush for ideation there's 56 videos in here and you can there's somewhere in there actually I should probably tell you where uh, oh way down here the custom interface menu so video 49 that'll kind of get you rocking and rolling as far as like the basics of ZBrush and um, and uh, setting up like custom menus because so you'll find like you know when you're just learning ZBrush you know kind of stick with what's there I'm gonna go ahead and flatten out uh, this peck a little bit uh, stick with what's there but then once you notice that like hey I'm using this all the time then you can set a hotkey for that and then if you're using it um, every once in a while then you can um, 
you can make a custom menu out of that and if you're using it you know maybe every once in a very long while you can stick it into your uh, lightbox menu up here and just have easier access to it so that's generally my rule of thumb when it comes to like custom interface stuff and again all the time I'll put it in a custom menu or a hotkey my quick access menu uh, and that's easy to do custom menus and then you assign a hotkey to that custom menu which is right here and then you have access to this and even up here I have like oh I need to use these spheres eh, maybe not for a while so I, ha I have access to it when I start doing a lot of z-sphere work um, but not necessarily uh, all the time here so we got our serratus here and these are going to be a little more parallel to the ground and then our um, obliques are going to kind of tuck in here but then there is that's not that the obliques need to overpower that rib cage necessarily that's just the flow of the muscles so and then the serratus is probably going to be a little bit rounder through here and then uh, yeah but if you wanted to lean into yeah that big curvy rib cage we could just put some indication of this but we could also you know kind of go through here and like you were doing just kind of lean into those that big gnarly uh, rib cage a bit and also you know you've got a belly and yeah, I don't know if you wanted, and I was trying to maybe see like, well, if we take this, let's go ahead and say control pin or mask pin, let's grab this here. And this is where it comes in useful or in handy when you um, so mask this and blur it a little bit. If you had um, subdivision history on the body, then you could go through maybe on a lower subdivision level and um, You could uh, kind of drop your your primary forms a little bit easier, that kind of thing. And now smooth, let's crank our smooth up a little bit. Uh, but anyway, cool model. And then if you wanted to put clothes and stuff on top of this, uh, or that big you know plague doctor mask on top of this, that'd be pretty fun to do too. Um, so that was a cool warm up. Um, let's see, let me get cut up real quick. Pose, then work on the costume, or complete model, then pose. Uh, if I'm doing something very flowy and very clothy, I might pose first, and then, well, actually, what I might do is just sculpt in the A pose, and then put clothing on it, and then you can do an avatar morph in Marvelous Designer, and that'll actually take the clothing and kind of pose. It's a linear interpolation, but it'll go through into a blend shape, and you can do multiple avatar blend shapes in Marvelous Designer so that uh, it'll kind of fold as it goes with it. And how, uh, let me see if I can just show you. For example, here's a, here's a creature wing that I did in Marvelous Designer. You can check that out. And basically all it is is just going through, I made some bones in ZBrush, and then I took those into Marvelous Designer, then I simmed it at different angles, just bringing in, so you can see as I imported that avatar over it, it would go through and like sim the cloth. So here it is, okay, import here. So it's importing and then it's moving. So if you had a body uh, and it went into a different pose, the cloth would just follow it and then simulate uh, based on the avatar position underneath it. So, and all any pinning that you've done will stay on it. So you can get a different cloth sim. So you could sculpt in symmetry and then deform the cloth later, even if you did the cloth on the A pose. And doing the cloth on clothing on the A pose probably a little bit easier. Uh, and then after that, you can take it into ZBrush and you could apply those as blend shapes or layers, I should say and then you can actually make like a little little thing you can go through and like um, blend between them so now you've got like a little foldable wing that you can use so that basic idea so basically I would say I'll do everything in a pose it just saves me time and it's not that difficult to go through and pose later let's go ahead and fatten these out a little bit there we go like that speaking of avatars let's go um kill out of here. I'm gonna... We were doing some Westworld stuff. Now we're gonna do some Avatar stuff. I'm a little late to the game. I think uh, my wife watched it when she was growing up. Um, saying I think I was a little bit old for it, but now I'm getting caught up. So I think it should be... I'm haven't, I haven't finished it yet. I'm only in book two right now. So no spoilers. But uh, I'm going to go through here, and we're going to do a real quick 
texture import and we're gonna put something together it's not probably gonna be what you think it's gonna be but uh, we got to start somewhere so I'm going go in here to streaming and grab some reference here and another good place to start is I'm gonna go into project uh, I can bring in this demo anime head, but what we're going to do instead is we're going to load a tool from a project and we're going to go to your ZBrush 2020 and then Z projects in here. And we're going to grab that demo anime head out of here just because I don't want to load in a bunch of settings that I, that I don't need to have on. I just really need the tool. Uh, and then what we can do is we can go in here to texture and grab it, add it to spotlight. And we're going to start with this because I think this will be easy. And then Go ahead and pull this down a little bit. And we're going to drop this res uh, this little guy standing in front of a window, the opacity down just a bit. I'm going to hit Z, and we're just going to go through, and we're going to snap this. I guess we can turn on perspective for this just to kind of match this up. Uh, and this should be fairly short work, so I'm going to go in here to Movie, Timeline, Show, and we're going to set a camera angle here. And then here's a little more three-quarter. Let's kind of line this up a bit. Okay, and then this one's back three quarter. It looks like they're really the only thing I need to change that much is the ears. We'll set another timeline key just by tapping on it. And then over here, I'm going to turn perspective off for this one. And again, we'll just kind of line this up just a bit. And there we go. So now I can use my arrow keys to kind of cycle through these. So we'll go back over here and we'll take this, I'm going to do shift Z, we'll turn this off and I can also turn off uh, show so I don't need to see that anymore. And we'll go through, I'm going to blur this out just a bit. So I'm going to mask around the ear and then control tap to kind of blur it out, control tap to invert this and then W and because I don't want to mess up the mesh too much, it's actually pretty dang close to what I want. I'm going to go ahead and put this back, turn on perspective and now I can just scale and rotate this um, as needed. And in fact, before I do that, turn on LSIM. That's your local axis. Go through here and you can just kind of move this ear into place. And we'll use the move brush too. And through here, let's uh, control tap to invert this and I can just pull this face and kind of push these shapes in just a bit. And again, just use your arrow keys to snap your mesh back. Now you, there is a way where you can draw and uh, sculpt behind here. It's going to be under your brush sample, so you can see we have spotlight projection turned on, and it's on by default, so that's nothing you really need to worry about. So I'm going to go forward to the next one, and we're going to control tap to invert this, and we're going to take these ears and just match here, and then control tap to invert this, and just we're just going through and just making sure that our profile is about where we want it. And this is all we can just smooth out, I think. And actually, we'll take a trim dynamic and just round that out on the nose there. And then we'll go to the next one. Control tap to invert that. And now, again, I'm just using a mask for where my ear is. And then control tap inverting that and using this. And now we have perspective turned on. And then this one, again, we'll turn perspective off and control tap. And we'll make sure that everything's lined up. And this isn't going to be perfect. Like when I when I uh, go out of this, you're going to see there's going to be some busted uh, stuff going on. But we can go through and we can fix that because at least our silhouette's kind of matching. And now we can go through and uh, you know use our smooth brush, hold down smooth and let go of smooth to do that alternate smooth here. I'm going to crank up. That's the intensity is already pretty cranked up. So control drag. Well, before we do that, right now our ears kind of embedded in our head a little bit. I'm just going to kind of pull that out just a bit and maybe inflate this here. Now if I go through and I, and I have DynaMesh, uh, it could start sticking this together, which is okay. Um, I can fix that later because uh, I am going to be making some fairly large changes in the, in the head here. Um, so you know what, I'll just deal with that. So hold down shift, we're going to drop that Z intensity down just a bit. And then now, uh, okay, so now we can just start going through here and just doing, just making sure we get, not going for super detailed right here, we can always make it as detailed as we want, I suppose, but making sure, let's go into our clay brush, and again, we can use clay brush or clay buildup. Um, I usually drop the intensity down on my clay buildup, sometimes I'll turn the alpha off um, as well. 
and we can mask this and then invert it and then just pull this right in here. And then uh, we can push this in and then standard brush this out. Ooh, standard brush got a little heavy. So I'm gonna crank that lazy radius up under your stroke. And then standard brush, drop that Z intensity, maybe down to 36. Turn off lazy radius. And then now we can go through here. And again, just kinda, this is gonna swoop down. And we can go through here and we can start using our move brush. There we go. And that chin shouldn't be that pointy. And the nose we'll fix in just a second. And the brows are probably okay. There's a soft kind of transition through here. And uh, eye position is going to be important too. So I'm just going to drop some eyes real quick right in here. And I'll put those a little more forward. They don't have to be looking straight ahead, uh, but not not out or not in, but uh, you know, kind of here-ish. And we'll say this is about where they should be. And to make sure, we can go through here and we can just kind of make sure that these are where we want them, give or take. And then we'll go here, turn on our perspective. And perspective is just P, you can turn that on. I'm gonna move this out of the way so I can see a little bit better. over. So control tap to invert this and we can give a little bit more room on the inside of the eye here. And now for this, let's take these eyeballs and split them off into their own subtool. We can hit D for dynamic if you want to do a make these look a little bit smoother without actually having to subdivide. We're going to take the subtool here. We're going to duplicate this off. Let's go ahead and apply those subdivisions, so dynamic apply, it's under your geometry menu. And we'll go in here to geometry, we'll delete lower. So I'm gonna hold down control shift, and we're going to do, you know, let's do this. Let's duplicate this twice. And we're gonna say hold down control shift, we're gonna go over here to trim curve, and we'll do a upper eyelid. And we'll go in here to our Q mesh, polygroup ball with our Z modeler brush, BZM. We'll pull this out, and then we'll take this bottom eyelid and we'll give ourselves a little bit of a lower eyelid, although not much of one. He doesn't really have much of a, his eyes are pretty wide open, which is okay. We just wanna make sure we have enough around there. So we've got this, I'm gonna alt tap the head here and we're gonna go through and we're gonna kinda, again, just pull this in so we see a little bit more of that eyeball. And then now we have a little bit more control over this and so now we can go here and again, let's rotate these back a bit. Let's go to Unmash Mesh Center and maybe even rotate this around. Here we go. So now, got our eyelids here, and then we got our lower lids here, and even these can probably just be rotated around a bit, something like that. Let me get caught up here. Ooh, actually, hold on just a second. feet were hurting. Didn't have my standing mat. Cool. Uh, I hadn't written any macros. Uh, any macros I'm going to do are pretty um, pretty lame. They're mostly like uh, action scripts, so I'll just use Z-Repeat it to kind of record what I'm doing and then uh, play those back for me. Uh, oh, okay. No, I'm not doing... Uh, let me see. Um... Give me a second. Hmm, forgot to set the title. Um, pick 
Logic Streaming. I think this should work. Let's give that a shot. Um, yes, I only stream once a month. I'm trying to stream more, but uh, it always turns out that uh, usually it doesn't happen. Cool. Uh, I am 38, <laughs> I think. Kind of lose track after a while. I'm doing good. Thanks for asking, everybody. There we go. Sorry about that. I always forget on uh, Pixelogics to change my name. <laughs> I need to. I need to put that a little bit more prominently in my things to do. So let's. Uh... Oh, another thing too. If you ever find that you're, and this is the same thing in like Photoshop, if your hotkeys aren't working. Uh, make sure you have caps lock off. I'll, I'll get overly excited and have my caps lock on and then um, I'll notice that it's acting a little bit uh, weird. So shift Z is where we go back and we you know have this. So now at this point uh, we can actually go through and uh, let me see is this about right and this is about right. I guess we can there's some slight modifications we can do but I think we're in good shape here. I think we're dang close. Um, the eyeballs seem to drop a little bit over here, but we'll stick with that front view. And I don't think this will be... this won't be anything we can't fix in post. Uh, we may need to make the neck... well, I don't know. Let's check that neck. Ah. Maybe make the neck a little bit wider up at the top. He's not quite that thin in the neck. So at this point, we can actually go through here. I'm just going to take this front view here. We're going to turn on RGB. Well, no, let's do this. Let's do a BPA. That's your paintbrush. And then you can go through here. And we have the RGB turned on with our spotlight turned on. We can go through and we can actually just paint um, where we want our features to be. So we're just going to take the uh, this. And actually, on the eyeball, I suppose we could do this too. Uh, in order to actually paint on here, what we're going to need to do is go in here to Geometry dynamic subdivision and apply those and maybe hit control D one more time to give us enough resolution and uh, also go out of standard brush because you can actually sculpt through but we don't really want to do that so now that we have the features on the head here we can go through and we can like maybe let's alt tap here we can mask on this little nose here we'll go ahead and pull this out and this will be kind of where our nose needs to be um, of course, we'll go back into our clay brush here so we can ease this transition. We're just using DynaMesh, so all we need to do is control drag. That'll redistribute our geometry or project geometry onto what we're doing here. So I'm going to go through here and we're going to use a move brush, kind of put this in. And then as far as the mouth goes, uh, I mean, obviously, you know, it can be very, very expressive, but I'm actually going to keep a nice. Um, you know, in, in the show, he, he's super expressive, and that's that's really cool. But on this particular thing that I'm going to be sculpting, I'm going to go for a very neutral expression on purpose. So we're going to go through here. We're going to hold down Alt to kind of pull his lip up. And maybe we can maybe dig in a little bit of a filter. But we don't want to put in a ton of detail. I'm not going for, like, hyper-realism on this necessarily. Um, but we can kind of just give an indication of a mouth. And then these brow details I'm going to use. Let's turn off RGB for clay brush. The brow details, and we'll turn that intensity down just a bit. I'm going to leave alone for now. I'm going to kind of build out his brow just a bit. And if you want to, you can hold down Shift and turn off RGB. And that'll smooth the geometry without touching your poly paint. And let's go through here. And I'm going to just kind of let's use the inflate brush. The inflate brush is usually nice and subtle, or soft, I should say. So I can go through and I can round out these forms a little bit without going through and having to do a whole bunch of smoothing. So again, just an inflate brush and then a little bit of smooth. If I want to, I can go through here. I can turn off uh, this poly paint or and or I can go in here to render and I can say, what can I say? Fade opacity. So I can fade the opacity of all the poly paint on my mesh down. We'll go ahead and leave that at zero for now. So we got the head here and I think, let me see that jawline okay. I'm gonna make some minor modifications here. I don't want to spend a ton of time on this. I want to get to some more 
interesting things. But just for now, uh, we can go through here and we can do a preliminary pass. Let me see if I can't find. Um, What I need to find is his eye color, which is brown. So we have basically where we want the eyes to go. So I can go through here and I'm gonna, let's do this. Let's go color, fill object. I'm gonna go maybe a bluish, maybe a darkish blue color, fill object. And we're going to have this set to, yeah, screw it. RGB on my standard brush Z had turned off. I'm mean, that's out of force of habit color fill object we're just going to knock this uh, eyeball back quite a bit and then we're going to go through here I'm going to do um, let's go to the clay brush turn on RGB and we're going to go to here to a, like a dark brown or you know what let's do let's do this first standard brush RGB and Z in, or RGB intensity turned down and then we're going to go to a little brighter white and in here we're just going to kind of color in this and then maybe a little brighter white here so we have a kind of a fade to darker around the eyeballs. And then we can go through here and we'll do like a dark brown. Now if you hold down shift and turn on poly paint for everything, um, there we go. Now the poly paint will stay on. Uh, and let's go back to the eyeball here, let's undo that. Let's hold that control so we can kind of control this a little bit better. Control tap to invert this, and we'll go color, fill object. Actually, let's tighten that up a little bit. Let's control alt, and I guess we got to fill object a lot because we had a 21. And let's do control D. Hmm. Let's try that again. It's a little bit too aliased for my taste here. Control D, Control D, and you know what's going to clay brush here. We'll grab a little dark brown, turn this on here. Now we could make uh, like on my earthworm gym, like a, like a real eyeball. Uh, we'll we'll forego that for now. So I'm going to go to a little bit brighter, a little saturated, drop this RGB intensity down. Uh, standard brush, RGB intensity down. And with the light coming in, uh, I mean, we can we can brighten up the eyeball all the way around and just kind of leave that outer ring a little bit darker. And then with the light reflecting in on the bottom, I think we can maybe pump up this bottom a little bit more. And then RGB intensity up just a bit. I'm going here to black and we'll put in that pupil. And we could go ahead and just say, okay, give me a, where's that toy shader? Um, toy plastic, toy plastic. There it is. Give me a toy plastic and we'll go in here to color, uh, M, color, fill object, and then we'll go back to our setup startup material so the eyeballs are at least white. Uh, now if this isn't enough or you want to just kind of put this in here, I'm going to turn off X symmetry and we'll just go ahead and put in uh, maybe on this side here. Let's do RGB and a white color and standard brush, 100%. And let's, we can just kind of put in a little bit of a highlight. So it always kind of follows. So you can use both. So we'll use this for now. And if I need to, we'll turn on X symmetry again. We'll go to unmatch mesh center. Local symmetry is turned on. And we can kind of modify these as needed. So we got this and we got our eyelids. Uh, let's take this head here and let's again pull this in just a bit. And for the bottom eyelid here, let me pull this out. If you ever get wobbly on here, remember you do have a poly group at the bottom and on the inside. So we can just go in here to edge, 
polish by features and just tap that. Now I go ahead and smooth those shapes out for us again. Polish by features. And I want the upper eyelid to be out further than the lower eyelid. And these, these eyelids on him, at least in this pose, are fairly um, subtle. I think that'll work. Okay. Uh, and then we can do the brow. I think the brow maybe we'll do... You know what? We can probably paint this in. But the eyes and the uh, arrow, I definitely want to have separate pieces of geo for effects later. I get caught up here. Oh boy, I'm way behind. Cool, thanks for all the kind words, everybody. Yeah, caps lock changes your crosshair in Photoshop as well, you're with George. Um, <laughs> yeah, so the, if you have like precise brush and then you have caps lock on, it'll change your um, brush as well. Cool. Uh, when we project a model, the destination model only good on the high subdivision, but the lower subdivisions are broken. When we project a model, the highest divisions. Lower subdivision should be broken. Cool, excellent, thanks. Um, yeah, okay, yeah, like uh, pre drag saying is uh, what I usually do is I'll start low and then I'll project all, up, project all, project all, project all. Um, just so, and it'll actually project a little bit faster and a little bit more accurately. Uh, so on this nose here, I'm going to hold down shift to smooth, and then we'll let go of shift. And then, you know what, we'll put in, uh, oops, standard brush, Z had turned on. Uh, we'll put in a little indications of little nostrils here. And let's turn down our Z intensity a bit. I'm going to go to the side here, and I am going to pull, I'm just going to make sure these lips do kind of follow the contours of the head enough. And again, we're going to keep this vaguely expressionless. And then, and it's not like he has, um, you know, like lips, lips, where I need to go through here and hold down Alt and like, ooh, let me put in little Cupid's bow and really kind of do this. This is probably a little bit overkill. Um, this is actually probably fine. Maybe a standard brush. Drop that Z intensity down. Smooth it out, and I could give little indications over here, of just like just just little touches of where you know there is going to be a little build up. But I don't need to put in like the more I do. If I was to do like this, um, now all of a sudden he's a little bit older. So I think this will be probably fine. Don't overthink it. So now uh, I need to get those eyelids uh, into place. And smooth this out, and you know what? Just this upper lip, just a little bit, a little side view. We don't really have a side view of him, so I'm gonna just do a little guesswork. I'm gonna pull this back here, and then maybe just a softer transition. So I have two move brushes. I have Move Accu, which we've talked about uh, forever on this program, uh, and then also just the regular move brush. So. I'll kind of move between those. For softer transitions, I'll just use the move brush. And then for a little bit more controlled transitions, I'll use the move accu. And that's just move with accu turned on under, where is that at? Brush curve, accu curve. So there's my accu curve, there's my regular. All right, let's get those eyelids in there. So I'm going to take this head, I'll take this upper eyelid, and let's give it a little bit more room over here. I like thick eyelids. So I've got uh, this upper eyelid, and this lower eyelid, and this head. And the head at the top is going to have a resolution. I'm going to crank this resolution up just a bit. And then I'm going to merge these down. So merge down one, merge down two, control drag. And that merges underneath here, by the way. Subtool merge down. But again, if you're going to use it, and you use it quite a bit, I don't use it that much, but um, I have it set to the same hotkey as my Photoshop merge. Smooth the intensity. We'll crank that up just a bit. 
And when I'm doing my Z intensity on my smooth brush, uh, hold down shift, obviously. If you don't hold down shift, it's going to do the intensity on whatever brush you have selected. So now the eyelids are on there. And we got this. So then we can go through and we can kind of start refining this. Now, uh, before I start doing a lot of sculpting, I've already got pretty much what I need out of this. I'm not going to be doing anything major. If you are going to be doing going nuts on like making changes, so like BSH, if you're going to be in here and being like, oh, hold on, I want to try this. Oh, that's kind of cool. Let's uh, turn off RGB though. Uh, making any major changes, um, you know, you'll probably want to stay in Z or Dynamesh land, uh, or if we were going to put in a mouth bag or something like that. I'm not going to bother, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through here, and let's do a Z remesh. And in order to do this a little bit easier, I'm going to go through here, I'm going to do a trim curve on the bottom of this neck. So we have a poly group down here, I'm going to go ahead and cap this off. Say delete hidden. Have X symmetry turned on. Um, I think we're in good shape, so we're going to take this here, and we're going to say this head, uh, we're use, we'll use project history. Um, I don't really I don't really need to go back in history. You know, you have your history slider up here and you can go all the way back to where we started and whoop, you can even play back through that and record it if you wanted to. But I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say edit, delete older history, undo history. I think we're in good shape. So uh, we got polyframe turned on and let's go ahead and turn off line, go into solo mode here and let's help this out a little bit. Let's go into our clay brush and do a little bit of cleanup work. Go ahead and smooth this out. So just like we did before, I'm going to kind of help out zero measure just a bit. And I can always get these edges back, so I'm not going to be too concerned about losing them. In fact, just so it doesn't get too caught up in trying to maintain those, I'm going to go and soften these transitions. Again, while I'm zero meshing, I'm more concerned about the topology than I am getting maintaining my detail. I can always, especially on a prod or a model this simple. That's uh, not a huge deal. So I'm going to go through here and hold that control. And we're just going to run a mask pin right underneath this lid here. Like so. And let's hold down control alt and we'll go ahead and, and just clean up where we want it right along that line. So we when we when we do go through and clean up this geometry. Ideally, we'll have a nice eyelid line, and that'll come in handy. Not that I have an, I'll have enough geometry to like actually blink his eyes, probably. Uh, but really, what I'm looking for is a good sculptable geometry, and I just want to have a little bit more predictability on where my edges are going to end up. So, okay, again, we'll do um, edge loop mask border under here, and then we'll say uh, edge loop mask borders under your geometry edge loops menu. And then we're going to go in here to auto groups and then do a geometry modified topology mirror and weld. We're going to grab these two here. Oops. Control W. And then that'll control those. And then this one, let's go ahead and say, I'm going to control mask around here. We're just going to put two concentric rings around here. And you could go into your brush auto masking menu and turn on um, poly groups up to 100. And you could avoid masking those poly groups. Or you could do, just do like I did and just take that visibility and remove it. This is by control shift clicking. And that's your select rect visibility modifier brush. If you want, if you are new to ZBrush and this is all um, just nuts to you, I'm going to bring this back up. This is a ZBrush for concept and ideation. Uh, the first 56 videos over here uh, in the series is free and it's on YouTube and you can just go and get caught up on all the ZBrush basics. Because I do know on my live streams I tend to go a little bit fast, but that's because I want to do cool stuff uh, and show more stuff. So I'm going to go back in here to smooth. Uh, nope, not peaks and valleys. We want a smooth um, border. Did I lose it? Did I restart? All right, brush. You know what? Maybe I did. <laughs> smooth border. Oh, smooth groups is what I was looking for. So now again, because we didn't do an edge loop mass border on this one, if I hold down shift, we can just go along this line and smooth it out. And I'll show you another technique in just a second on our next one. So that's one other way you can do it. So now control shift tap this one. And uh, maybe, I guess around the mouth, in this case, since we're not opening the mouth, it's not that big a deal. Uh, but if you wanted to, I mean, if you're gonna have an edge in here, you might as well go through and 
maybe put a ring around this. Now, uh, this one, if we hit Control W, this is going to give us, you know, again, that alias line. And in fact, let's do a little bit better. Let's hold down Control Alt, tighten that up a little bit. Uh, so we got that alias line. So we can go through here and we can say, hey, you know what? On our masking, we want to mask our group's border here. Uh, we can control tab to invert that, and then again, deformation, polish by features, and you can just polish that line down. And uh, around the ears, I suppose I don't, I don't really care that much, but uh, I suppose while we're here and talking about it, we might as well. So we'll go through here, and we'll just grab this part of the ear, like so, and then mask, tighten that up a little bit. And we'll say, uh, you know, on this one, we'll just do an absolute mask border. Bring everything back. There we go. And then on the back of the ear, if you want a line, it's nice to have a line that kind of follows this part of the ear. So I'm going to go through the back and say, make this its own poly group. Let's go and turn off the line so we can see our mask a little bit better. And if I wanted to be very, very precise, I could go through and use z-spheres to, uh, or topology brush, I suppose, although that one's a little bit more difficult for me to control. I don't mind topology brush for like simple things like straps for sure, uh, but when it comes to like anatomy uh, or facial topology, uh, I find z-spheres a little bit easier or more precise, I suppose. So we're gonna go through here, we'll put a poly group back here. So again, bring everything back edge of the mass border. And we could go, you know what, just to help it out a little bit more, I'm gonna go around the mouth, just a concentric ring through here, and then Control W, and then smooth this out just a bit. And you could also just have smooth on when you go to zero mesh, there's a smooth option to keep on. Um, but in our case, I think this will be okay. So uh, we'll put lines on, and we're gonna go through here, and we're gonna say zero mesh, Adapt to size, it will put it down to zero. I think we can get some nice even quads out of this. Uh, target pocket kind of five is probably fine. Keep group, smooth groups down to zero because we've already smoothed them. And hit zero measure. Okay, uh, I'll get cut back up here. Um, mm -hmm. Cool. Oh, and um, yeah, project history, and here's another thing too. If you go to, and it's on my YouTube channel as well. But here's ZBrush 2020. What's new? And you still have you have all this in here. So if you want to go through, here, let's do a history recall brush basics project history history recall brush with different subtools history recall brush versus ZProject history recall versus Morph. All that new stuff in 2020 is here. So you know what here. So ZBrush 2019, what's new? ZBrush 2020, what's new? This is a good pl good a place as any is to find the new features that have uh, come up, or um, and or on my YouTube channel. If anybody's ever talking about stuff, you can just go in here and say like project history. There you go, project history video 11. Or you can go in here to playlists and you can be like, okay, what's new in 2020? What I miss out on? And you can scroll down and you can go, hey, what's new in 2020? Full playlist. And now you've got, you know. Here's what's new in 2020. So that might get you caught up on some of those features too. Uh, and if I miss anything, I apologize. I'm just kind of scrolling through real quick. Uh, do, 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 do. Anatomy course for ZBrush that you could recommend me. Um, no, not off the top of my head. Can create UV and texture after decimation master on model. Sure. Uh, yeah, probably. Let's see. Let's take his eyeballs here and we'll just move them back in a bit. And the cool thing about having subdivision history is I can now move these primary forms down quite a bit. Uh, and I also, and now I could project history back to his other face. But I think it'll be okay. And you could go through here and you could try doing uh, zero mesh. You can hold down Alt and then do another half. And this is actually pretty decent. I can go through and fix this up just a little bit. Um, you know what? I think I can live with that. Basically getting as low as I can uh, while maintaining 
the kind of the loops that I want. So through here, we have X-symmetry turned on. I'm gonna go through here with my Z-modeler brush. And we're gonna say uh, split, or no, we're gonna say bridge two points. And we're gonna kind of fix this a little bit. But first we need to split this. So we're gonna say split edge, bada bing. And now we don't need to bridge because it's already got an edge loop here. So we'll go ahead and knock this back a bit and we can go through here and we can say delete edge. So U and U can get deleted. I kind of help that out a little bit. And we could even go through this. We could even collapse this, I think. Collapse edge. Let's collapse this back. Uh, that's not great, but I don't think we're going to be animating the ears that much or moving the ears around that much. I think this will be fine. Uh, okay, so let's say this is OK. So we're going to go through here. And we have X-symmetry turned on, and we have zero measure. So another thing I'm going to do is cap the bottom of this neck. I don't like working on single-sided geometry. So I'm going to say close convex hole. I'll hit Control W. And it uh, looks like there's also a little bit of a messy ear place. Uh, I mean, I guess it's not. I guess I can live with that too. OK. Uh, so now if we did want to project history, or you can just start sculpting from scratch on the new quad geometry. And this will be much easier to UV as well. Uh, we could do that. Or we can also go back down here to like where our detail is. Oh yeah, our, our detailed message is going to be here. So I'm going to control tap that first area of history, which I think it does automatically if you don't do anything. Uh, so we can go back here and we can say project history. Uh, yeah, you know what? We'll go ahead and project our color as well. Uh, we'll hit control D and then project history and then control D and project history. Control D, project history. So now we have nice even quad geometry. We have our detail back and uh, we actually have our poly paint back as well. So let's go through here and I'm gonna modify. Let's go down subdivision level one. Let's kind of push these eyelids in just a bit. Again, making we can make still pretty major changes on the lowest subdivision level in that way. Uh, again, it's just a different, easier way to kind of control the geo. Just like so, and then we'll go up so level two. And because we have polygroups here, we can even run, uh, you can do a poly, polish, poly, polish by features. Um, and that's going to kind of be a little bit tougher, but we can go in here to smooth groups now. And I can just run a smooth groups along this line and just smooth these transitions out as well because we have polygroups in between them. So that'll kind of help. And you could also mask, just like when we were doing the other geometry, you can go through and mask and then polish by features on your mask border, stuff like that. But and then so there's level three, so there's level four, and so now we got nice quad geometry. It'll it'll behave even while you're sculpting. It'll behave a little bit more predictably as well, which is nice. And then we can go through here with our Damien standard maybe. And now we do have subject in history, so you're not going to be able to like maybe do some things like insert mesh a brush or anything like that. Um, but we can, there's, there's definitely ways around that. Or like topology brush if you want to do those brows on a separate subtool. Like if you want to go into a BTO right now, it's not going to let me because we have subdivision history. But, um, and the eyeballs also do as well. But we can go through here. Let's do an insert poly mesh 3D. We'll hit X symmetry and we'll hit, uh, it'll scale this down. It's going to stick this right inside of his head. So with that null object in there with no subvision history in the middle, now I can feel free to do BTO. And we'll say, you know what, give me a line here and a line here, and we'll just go whoosh, whoosh. And now we have uh, geometry for our brow. And we'll hold down Alt and get rid of those. And I think this is okay. So we'll just tap off here and we'll say split mass points. And this one, we can hit D for dynamic. Go in here to crease level of one, smooth sedative of three. And now we have a little pair of eyebrows we can modify. Now, of course, you could just paint those on. There's no reason you have to um, put those on here. We can also go through if you did, um, we did a crease poly group, but if we do Shift D, you can also go through here. We can say crease edge, and you can hold down Alt. If you want to uncrease these top ones, that'll kind of give you a smoother transition. And these also might be a little thick. So we'll go through here with Q mesh poly group all 
island and then hold down shift and pull and Z modeler brush basics are again in those links I sent out earlier just the ZBrush for concept and ideation uh, first 57 videos that'll take you through like Z modeler basics and stuff like that so or Z modeler brush basics now the this arrow let's do that a little bit differently so I'm gonna go through here we're gonna take this head we're gonna duplicate it off and we're gonna go to solo mode and I think how do I want to do this we could poly paint it and do a mask we could do a slice which might be kinda neat let's delete lower on this one so we have our arrow here I'm gonna go through here and we're gonna do a slice so it's a control W and I'm just gonna grab this geometry here. Uh, although actually it's got to go all the way back down his head. Okay, we'll do this. Let's hold down control and we'll go into um, hold down control and then masks. We're going to mask this part out here and then down the back uh, we want to go ahead and mask all this. So we want this strip all the way down his neck. Uh, then we're going to hold down control and we're going to go into mask curve, control and then alt and let go. And that'll unmask. Do a little bit better than that. And then control, alt twice, unmask. And uh, you know what? I had visibility on. Let me show you this. Hold down control shift. So you can actually hold down control shift and control and uh, get rid of visibility. So while we're doing all this unmasking, it's not going to affect the other side. Oops. Control, Alt tap twice, Alt, and then I'll get rid of that. I'll bring this all back, and now Control. I'm just gonna have this go a little bit straighter, and I can always fix this up later. Something like that. That should work, right? So I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do is let's. I'm gonna tap, hold down Control and tap, and then Control Alt tap, just to kind of um, ease these transitions out a little bit. And we'll hold down Control Alt, Control Mask Pin, hold down Control Alt, and now we can use uh, Control to mask out, and then Control Alt to mask in, and we can go ahead and clean up or extend these out a little bit. Now the eyebrows we could paint on, not a big deal. This arrow I definitely want to have as a separate piece of geometry because I want to put different materials on it, um, something like this. Actually, let's do this. Alt, Control Shift, I'm not going to overthink it. Sometimes you just got to brute force it. Don't need a bunch of fancy tools. You just got to go in here and just paint it out. There we go. So we've got this. This is on a copied piece of geometry. Uh, let's go back to our trusty uh, edge loop mass border here. We can isolate this and that give us a, kind of an okay cut through here. Uh, there's another way we could help this out a little bit and that's when if you were to want to go in here to extraction you can have this little smooth here so when you extract uh, this it's gonna kind of smooth that out and you can polish that even more if you wanted to. Um, another thing you could do you know, I just want to Z remesh this. I like I like having new geometry through here, so I'm going to say delete hidden. We have X turned X symmetry turned on. Z remesh or death size down to zero. Keep groups off. Uh, we'll just say half. We'll Z remesh. Uh, let's see here. Cool. Yeah, move accu is um, that accu curve. So underneath brush. Uh, whenever, and especially when you're doing like hard surface stuff, uh, Accu, so move brush, and then Accu curve turned on, I'll pull out the corner. So we'll use it on this arrow probably. Uh, so let's do this, half, half, and like here it's starting to, it's like, hey, you know what? I do want this to pull out to a corner and I want to keep these smooth. So half, 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 half. A little too much, let's try this. So down Alt, half, mm, that's about as low as it wants to go. And you know what? I can live with that. And if you wanted to, if you wanted even less, you could go through here and do like insert single edge loop and hold down Alt and get rid of these and maybe like every other span if you wanted to. But I think this will work just fine. Uh, I do want to move this over a little bit. So we'll see. 
over here. And you know what? We could also do this. We could say uh, ZModeler brush slide, so you can slide along that edge. So if you wanted to move these points around but not mess around with the volumes, that's another option you could do. So we'll go out of solo mode. So now I've got my thing here. So I say QMesh polygroup all. I'll pull this out. And then, you know, we can even hold down shift and, you know, so basically if you QMesh, that'll give you an extra ring. But if you hold down shift, it'll just pull along those surface normals. So that's really all I'm doing there. Uh, so now I'm going to go through here. I'm going to crease, crease tolerance down to like, I don't know, 56 or so. And then I'll go ahead and crease all these angles for me. So now I can hit D for dynamic, and we'll do a crease level of two, smooth level of three, and now I'll get a nice smooth result on here. I'll go ahead and alt tap on this head, and we'll go ahead and get rid of that poly paint here. So now, this eyeball here, we'll turn this poly paint on. Shift Z, put this back here. And I'm going to make some minor modifications. So we've got we've got the basic landmarks of what I need. Uh, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the shape of his eyeball a little bit to give him more of that teardrop kind of look. And again, because we have subdivision history, not that big a deal. So it should be pretty easy. And then it's going to go up here. And also, I think these eyes might be a little bit bigger. Let's go to Unmesh Mesh Center. I'm going to scale them up and pull them back just a bit. And we can also use move accu on the corners here. Zero mesh, uh, especially on a super stylized head like this, you could start with, and we essentially kind of already did. You can start with almost nothing, and uh, and just go through and just move things around as needed. So, which again, like we, it's kind of what we did. So we can go through here, and we can kind of we can just get that. It's kind of a swoopy eye thing here, and these eyeballs maybe need to come in just a little bit more. And if you want to, you can actually go in here and you, like, you use your move brush um, to really kind of break those shapes if you need to. I don't know that we have to do that just yet. I'll keep them round as long as I can. And another thing we can do, we can hit Z, so we, let's, let's do this. Let's take this one here. I'm going to zoom in on this one, and then Z. Go Z, and put this up here, and we're going to turn the opacity on, just so I can kind of go back and forth and see, oh, okay, so here, this eyelid. And we don't need to worry about the ears collapsing in on the head because we don't have Dynamesh on anymore. So we can, you know, push those ears back. And let's also pop these ear geometry up a little bit.
and since we're moving around not that dense of geometry, uh, it's pretty, it's a lot simpler. We'll go so to level two, and we could smooth out these eyelids just a bit on the higher sort of end levels. I'm going to go ahead and keep them creased while we're looking at them here, but then when I get up to like sort of end level four, uh, they already are pretty smooth. Uh, you can go through and you can kind of yeah, smooth those out just a bit more. is a bit of a, looks like a little substandard piece of geo in here. So I can probably brute force it. So if I hold down shift and let go of shift, I can kind of smooth, I can kind of push along those volumes that we have. Smooth this out a little bit. Let's go just a quick smooth pass here. Oops, forgot. And if you want to, you can go ahead and say, okay, show, give me another one here, or I can get rid of all these since I'm not using them anymore. And then I can just say, okay, new one here. So now I can go through and modify these as needed. So we'll call this close enough for government work. So now we have the first part of our, let's actually strap down something level three of our thing here. Oh, you know what? Let's go out of smooth groups uh, because I don't want to keep those necessarily smooth together. Uh, back to smooth, and we'll go through and we'll help this little ear out a little bit more. And again, even if you wanted to take this, you could modify this geometry on uh, my YouTube channel. If you do a search for um, zero mesh cleanup, you can go through and you can actually clean up the zero mesh with Z spheres, uh, give you a little bit more control. But you guys could do a Z model or two if you don't have to do that much. All right, so there's our neutral expression. Uh, and we have to have a neutral expression because we're going to do uh, the face stealer next. And I think that'll be kind of a fun one for kind of a modular um, creature type thing that we could do. Uh, why'd you extrude it even though it's part of the tattoo? Uh, you could, I want to put a different material on it and you could do a different material uh, just kind of going through. So if I wanted to do like, okay, here's our skin shader four. Uh, you know what, let's just do this. So we're gonna do, um, you know what, hold on just a second. I want to say, no one. I'm gonna do a little bit more on these cheekbones just a little bit. Uh, okay, so anyway, we can go up here and you know what we could do? Let me load up. I need some color reference. So I'm going to load up some of that. Let's do... You could also do like a tune shader too on this if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is good enough, I think. So let's say... Save image as, just real quick. Here, we're going to texture, import. We're gonna drop in our streaming here. Go out of edit mode, control in. So we're gonna take a plane and we're gonna go in here and we're gonna say um, texture map. And we're going to apply this texture map. We're gonna say poly paint, uh, let's first, Let's go over here to make polymesh 3D. And then we're going to say texture map, load it up. And we're going to say uh, poly paint from texture, hold down control, no, alt, no, shift. Or is it not square?
Okay, yeah, it is shift, but if you have MRGB turned off when you're doing uh, shift, it's not going to work. So I did shift, polypane for texture. That's going to change my aspect ratio. So now when I turn the texture back on, <clears throat> it won't be squashed. So, uh, and you could transfer this to an actual polypaint, but all I was using this polypaint for was to change the aspect ratio. So basically, I'm just going to put this up here in the upper corner, do shift S to story screenshot. We'll switch back over here. I'll use this. Oh, to get back uh, to, well, yeah, we were going to poly paint this first. So we have this. I'm, so I'm going to go over here and just sample. So we're going to hit C and we're going to say color, fill object, and then um, let's say C on this one, color, fill object. Let's say C color fill object and this these type bars actually look pretty sharp so I'm going to say uh, crease PG uh, all the way around and you know what we even maybe do crease level of two so we subject level three and uh, what else I think that'll work so now I'm going to sample this in here and this can be kind of our dark color we can go through I'm going to say back here we're going to RGB mode turn the RGB intensity down a bit turn off Z add and now we can go through here and kind of put in some indications of some darker areas that we're not going to um, paint. And even for like, yeah, the eyebrows and stuff, or not the eyebrows, but the um, the lids, we're not going to put in actual geometry, although you could. I think, it, But it's subtle enough to where I think I can just go through and just kind of paint it. And if you are into the whole tune look, uh, again, on my YouTube channel, this ZBrush 2019 what's new, there's a ton of stuff in here on uh, the, not only rendering for, uh, with filters, BPR filters, you can also go down here and then with um, the ZBrushGuides.com uh, website, I went through their PDF with their blessing, with uh, Pablo's blessing, and I went through with that and I did a video playlist on that, on his PDF here, uh, on the ZBrush Guide stylized rendering, so if you want to use matte caps for your tune shader. So there's a couple resources there for you if you wanted to kind of get a little bit of a cartoonier render out of this. Um, I think that'll work. You know, let's carry this down just a little bit as well. Again, to C to sample. Uh, color. And then C to sample. And you can also uh, hold down shift and then just have RGB turned on in your smooth and that'll smooth out um, your color and not your Z brush information. So we'll go ahead and knock this back a bit. We don't want it to go all the way down here. Now if you did want to breathe a little bit of life into this we can go through here, we can sample this, and I'm gonna to go to a little bit of a redder uh, color here. We're gonna drop that RGB intensity down considerably and go through, I can just kind of, where the blood would pool, maybe put in a little bit of reds here. Uh, and I don't necessarily wanna make it look like he's blushing, so if you need to, you can sample back on his head and kind of knock this back a little bit. You can also put in some of the zones of the face. You can go in here with maybe a little bit more of a golden color on his forehead. And then, uh, yeah, red, kind of a little bit ruddier across here. And then, uh, not that you would need to do this, uh, like, uh, like go nuts with this one. Uh, you know, if you do, if you do this, it's going to look like, uh, you know, he's got shaving stubble, which, you know, probably don't need to do. But we can cool this down. Or, and also just remember, you can go in here with just some blues and greens. And again, just kind of just lively, liven it up just a bit. And let's make sure we have the yeah, laser radius off. And if we want to make it look a little more skin, uh, we can go through here and let's go into our render. And we're going to say render properties. Let's turn on wax preview and then with this material selected so you can just drag out of this material and pick it we got screen shader 4 and then under the material here 
we'll turn on wax modifiers. I'm going to crank up that strength a bit, like so. And now, when we go in here and render this, let's say we want to do a quick uh, BPR render, let's go ahead and turn on our floor, cast a little shadow down here, turn on our perspective. And uh, we could change that light around, but let's go back into our render properties here, and I'm going to change that angle on our shadow. So we have shadows turned on. We don't have ambient occlusion turned on, but we could turn that off if we want to. But under here, underneath shadow, um, the floor strength will turn down, the global strength, or just global strength, <laughs> will turn down. The angle will turn up just a little bit so that as that shadow gets further away from the object, it'll kind of fade out a little bit. Um, so now, looking at this, three-quarter view. I'm going to go back down here to set it in level one. And we can turn off our polypaint temporarily. Let's go ahead and just hit control N to clear our canvas. And I think part of it is, uh, we'll go ahead and turn off this eyebrow as well. I'm going to take this and just change that profile a bit from the side, or from that front three-quarter. And let's go back up here, and I'm going to turn back on our start material, hold down shift to smooth, and we'll drop our resolution down just a little bit. Whenever you're smoothing and you're like, oh, hold on. RGB off. Uh, whenever you're smoothing and you're kind of fighting the geometry, you could crank up. Uh, we have I have smooth stronger turned on by default on my smooth brush, and that's under your smooth properties. You can just go down here to your brush, and then way down here underneath your smooth brush modifiers, you can do weighted smooth mode, and you set that to one for smooth stronger. It's also in your um, your what's it called? Your brush light box. And let's go in here. We'll fill in this temple just a little bit. matches, but I'm going to pull in these eyebrows just a bit. And you can also thin them out, so you can go in here with your pinch brush and go through and you just kind of use this to kind of thin them out just a bit. And let's take, the, he's got a slight smile on his face. I'm going to drop the corners of the mouth just down just a little bit. Um, I'll also go through here. I'm going to soften this just a bit as well. So over the eyeball. Pull this down. Now, if you wanted to, again, you could go through here and you could like mask, control tab to blur it, invert this, and then you know pull this down over the eyeball if you wanted to do like you know those orbits. And <laughs> with the perspective turned on, that draw menu or that draw angle is a bit intense. Let's crank the intensity up on that. There we go. But in this case, I'm just going to use inflate. I think. Here, so in level two. All right, so turn this all back on. We'll go back up. And now uh, when we do our BPR render, uh, we've got some kind of faked subsurface scattering. And you could, you could always go into your um, your um, render properties and do actual subsurface scattering, but I would do that uh, using the, uh, again, the BPR filters. I have to put that kind of uh, in where you'd want it to go.
Uh, first of all, you know, Zebra Sprite Nation is free on YouTube, full series available on our station, or full series is free and paid. Uh, it's free on YouTube, the first series, and then uh, Gumroad, Cube Brush, Art Station, you can buy it. Oh yeah, and so now the other part too is you could uh, have a separate uh, object or a material on here. So one thing you can do, uh, let's do this. Let's say duplicate this head off. Hold that shift, shoot it to the top. Take this here, uh, duplicate it off, shoot to the top. I'm going to merge these down. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say, um, geometry. Oh, it's already doesn't have any. So we're going to say, oh yeah, that's because it's just dynamic. So we'll do shift D, you know, we'll do D and we'll say apply those dynamic subdivisions and then we'll say geometry, delete lower, and then we'll merge these down. So when I merge these together, I can take these two sub tools here and there's a plugin called, what's it called? Um, Mask, masking, masking, masking. Do I not have it on here? Uh, where would it be called? Uh, intersection masker. So you can create an intersection mask uh, based on uh, these subtools here. So now I can control shift click this and I've got this on here. So now I can do control shift A. We can say delete hidden. Uh, looks like I accidentally put a divot on his head. So now we have this as an object. So you may be thinking, well, let's, let's make that transition a little bit better. So I'm gonna fill this with a different color. So here, if I, invert this and we're going to say, okay, this is my uh, skin material here. And RGB, MRGB, color, fill object, and then control tap this. And we want to have this one be, uh, I don't know, plastic or whatever. Fill object here. So now it's two different materials, but uh, the material is only going to be either on or off for any polygon. So it's not going to have a blend between uh, verts. So if I go in here and BPR render, um, it, it looks a little bit alias. You can fix that a little bit. You can go in here to your, I think it's in here. You know, it's probably under the render menu. At least that would make sense, right? So under render properties, materials blend radius, you can crank that up. And then now uh, it'll put a little blend between there. So the higher that goes, that's just the pixel value of blending that material out. So it smooths that transition. But uh, if I wanted to do something crazy, like, let's say delete. Let's go ahead and turn these all back on. Go from, you know, this blue, and actually this blue probably shouldn't even have this. Like I said before, um, we could duplicate off the skin material, uh, or skin shader, or, you know, I just put like a basic material on that. So we're going to say MRGB color fill objects. So we get that uh, material on here, and then I go into the material, and I can say you get uh, diffuse all the way up. Uh, we can change that specular if we want to, but we'll keep that about where the skin should be. And I don't know, it could be something like this. Uh, but if we wanted to go crazy and be like, you know what, I want this to be a flat color, for instance, and white, and then for the eyeballs as well, and have this type of uh, look. Uh, it's a lot easier and it's a lot better render if I wanted to do this as opposed to uh, having to go through and be like, okay, let me mask where that material and color is and then fill it with a flat and then that kind of thing. It just gives me a little bit more leeway uh, and a little bit faster and easier to do this than it would be just painting it on. Uh, uh, so the episode he couldn't sleep. <laughs> that was, um, yes, where they were uh, flying around and they kept getting chased. Mm. If you want to lean in that, lean into that, uh, obviously he would be uh, a little more like this. And then uh, we could go, let me give um, him a little purple under his eyes here. And this is, yeah, so you have MRGB turned on. Um, it's going to paint material, but you can also just go through here and just paint color. And uh, now we get some blues in here and we could be like, make make a little zombie ang. Now he's a little sleepy. Uh, you can make blend shapes, uh, you could. Uh, if you want to make blend shapes, like if you want to do different expressions, I, if I was going to do blend shapes, I definitely would have given them a mouth bag. 
Uh, but in here, you can check this out. Um, this will take you through layers in ZBrush, and also if you want to throw those into Maya as blend shapes, it's a pretty easy process. Is coloring something you'd always do in ZBrush, or would Substance Painter be a good option too? Uh, if I'm doing color for production, I'll just do it in Substance Painter. But uh, if I'm just kind of messing around, or if I want to do a base coat uh, in ZBrush, um, there's nothing wrong with that either. Um, I, well, I don't know that I have a ton of that necessarily. Oh, you know what? On the Mechanical Skull, uh, I did go into Substance Painter and rendering. So if you wanted to make your own uh, Terminator style skull, you could do that as well as down here. I mean, I do have some like Substance Painter starter stuff, but this Commander, actually probably this one's easier to look at. Uh, this one right here. So here's the, here's this Commander ZBrush process. So going through and making this guy. I actually have the videos for this, so I should just edit those and put those out. Um, they're old, but they exist. And then these ones are like the painter process, so like skin and rendering. Um, if you want to walk through here and just kind of do, you know, skin and tattoos and splotchy and throw it into eye ray and, you know, that kind of stuff. You can do that in Painter as well. It's all fun. Uh, <laughs> how do we download a character for free on the internet? Just Google download free character and you'll get tons of options. Do they use ZBrush over at Hasbro? Yes, in fact, um, if you do, there's a Hasbro Toys ZBrush Summit, and he goes through and he's saying how he used ZBrush for the joints, and the he talks about the different plastics and the different joint types. It's a really cool presentation, you know, articulation on joints and how you use ZBrush with those joints and booleans uh, and modifying these things. Um, so you can go through and you can print out little Star Wars characters and all that stuff, so I'll go ahead and link that here. Cool, and I'm just getting caught up, sorry about that. Uh, can you poly paint on different layers? So when blurring, you will not destroy painted detail. Uh, yeah, you can poly paint on layers, I tend not to, but layers do hold poly paint information. They also hold masking information. So if we go in here to layers, if you hover over this and do a new layer, uh, you're gonna see Poly paint shape and mask is all contained in the layers there. Uh, build a house inside out for game engines considering colliders. Uh, I probably wouldn't build a house for game engines in ZBrush. I mean, you can. Uh, I have I have some stuff I've done. Oh, let's see if I can even find this anymore. Ooh, I moved it. I moved it. It was, uh, I put it on here. Nameless. Unreal. Nope. Um, source environments. Nope. Uh, source assets environments. <laughs> uh, like this one, for instance. So we can load this up here. And you can kind of do um, your rooms. Like, so here's our room, but then when you're talking about interior spaces or if you're doing like modular things that need to snap, I would probably model that and snap it externally from ZBrush and then bring it in and mess with it. Uh, I use this for like concepting a room. So if I wanted to um, like have a room in here. So like the ceiling I got to get rid of. I mean, here's the ceiling. Uh, but I don't necessarily want to see that if I'm trying to get into the room, but you can't like, oh, I'm going to walk up this walkway and like walk into this room. Um, ZBrush is more of a you know, you focus on the asset here. It's not like a walkthrough and work on an asset type program, at least not that I've been able to uh, figure out. So uh, here's the, you know, the walls. Well, I need to get rid of the back of these walls. So now I can see, oh, okay, there's the walkway I walk up. And then here's the floor. And again, this isn't necessarily how I'd make an environment. Uh, I would, this is just a block out. So it's to kind of get my idea out. And then I would go through and do like Substance Painter, uh, Substance Designer, uh, layered materials in Unreal and, you know, do this for real as far as like a tiling texture that could wrap around and be super optimized and stuff like that. But just for getting, getting your idea out and you know the walkways and the decorations and the design and how things could function, uh, you could do that. It's like these doors through here, and these eyeballs could, there's a little eyeball in here, and then this door kind of opens and closes. Um, you know, like that. So. Uh, but as far as like modeling a, a, an environment, um, 
I mean, yeah, like you said, you could turn it inside out. You could just like flip this and now you can see through it as long as you don't have thickness on the walls. Uh, but I don't know, not my, not my expertise for sure. Cool. Okay, let's drop this out of here. I'll say delete all. So uh, we got this going, and now I want to go through. And I guess uh, how much time we got left? We got. Eh, I guess we got enough time to start. I was gonna say we could block out the body, but really, what I'm looking to do is just start blocking out the overall scene here. So let me find my scene picture if I can find it. Oh, there it is. Okay, so. Um, this is going to be a creature, but it's going to be kind of a modular creature. There's no point in me. I don't have to. It's not like a creature I have to model out in an A pose and then pose later. Uh, that's certainly valid. Um, let's do this. I'm going to take this RGB. And we're going to knock this back here. And in fact, I'm going to lighten this up just a little bit. So uh, we got this here, and he's going to be kind of standing this way, and he's going to have a creature kind of hanging from a stalactite. So what we're going to do, I guess we can start on the creature. And it's a little bit hard to see, but it's easy enough to start. So what I'm going to do is save this. Go ahead and save this as streaming. And we'll go out of here completely. And let's start with, it looks like, you know, we can start with anything. Let's start with the PolyMesh 3D here. And we're going to go down here. We'll say initialize Q cube. And in here, we're going to kind of squash this down a little bit. And we're going to do a Z, oh yeah, so Z modeler. This was another question that was up. Uh, Z modeler, hover over an edge in this space bar to bring this up. So, and again, on my, um, go through here, we can say bevel. Oops, with complete, and then say Control Alt and move this up, and then scale this down a little bit. And we can also go through here, and we could do like a bend arc and kind of bend this around. And this could be the start of our shape here. And uh, I'm probably just going to end up dynamic meshing this, but just for an example of like basic uh, blocking out a base shape. Another thing is, is this is going to be a repeating shape that's going to go along the surface of a creature. Uh, and how I would do that is with probably an insert mesh brush. However, um, if I want to just get an idea of what these plates would look like together temporarily, I'm going to go in here to array mesh, trying to transpose lock position, lock size, hit W, hit Y to go out of gizmo. And now I have transpose. So now I can use my transpose line to like pull out copies and repeat them uh, like so. So now I have an idea of you know, how these plates would kind of work together. So now I can go through here. And if these are going to overlap, I'm going to go ahead and turn off transpose, hit Y to go back into gizmo. I can have these kind of overlapping a bit like so. And uh, I'm pretty much done as far as the uh, back scales. Now uh, we have another uh, body part over here. So let's do this. Let's say hold down Alt. Let's hit X, go across X symmetry here. And we'll just Q mesh these out and then unmask these and we'll rotate these down and around like so. So now underneath is going to be kind of a, a little, um, little centipede type body. So I'm going to go through here and we're going to say, let's insert a primitive. And we'll just drag that right down the middle. Although, let's do this. Let's do a quick mirror and weld across the X. So we have something to put in there. And I'm going to go ahead and split this off. Now you're going to see, because I dragged it out on something that had subdivision history, this art, uh, had uh, a ray mesh turned on. I have a ray mesh turned on for this one as well with the exact same properties. So that's kind of a, that's kind of a neat thing. I'm going to go in here to my move accu and I'm going to pull out to corners. Here and I'm actually going to zero mesh this. We'll say half that size down to zero. It's under geometry zero mesh, and we'll just zero mesh this back because I don't need anything complex. It's just you know get this into shape. And if I want to, I can go through here and do a quick polish by features under your deformation menu, and we'll go through and we'll just kind of get this little body block out. Now again, this isn't going to be the actual body of the creature. This is just for me to visualize you know how these things are going to stack up to each other if they were kind of in a line. Which is what they're going to end up being. And, and the arms and stuff, that's just going to be hair. We can do that at the very end. Um, I 
could go through here. Let's do this. Let's do uh, subtool append. Let's go into Z spheres and take the Z sphere, hit X symmetry, and we'll go ahead and scale this down. And we'll turn on transparency, and we'll hit W. And I'm going to use these to kind of block out the legs. I'm going to hit Q and hold down Shift, and then I was going to snap it to the same uh, width. And we can thin these out. We can always thicken them up later. Uh, but now we have these, and for the arms here, you know what, let's scale this up a little bit. And then Q, hold down Shift, and move this out, and I can thin these out a little bit. So we're going to scale. So it's basically move, scale, and rotate. So here's move, uh, here's scale, and then here's rotate. Now it's just going to rotate that end, but you can rotate these bones as well. And you can also move these bones, and you can also scale down the bone. So it'll be uh, in a hierarchy. So you can use this for rigging, uh, and you can also just use this for kind of developing um, kind of a base mesh, which is what we're using it for right now. So Q, and this will kind of come back here, and then I'll kind of pull this forward. This will be another segment of the arm, and then Q, draw, and then move this out, and we can maybe taper this down. Uh, now, of course, we can sculpt this, and this is just going to be a repeating arm. So there's two different types of repeating arms. I guess I'll show you what I'm making. See this thing right here. So there's two different right types of repeating arms. There's these ones here, and then these ones down here. They're very similar, though, so I can probably just use one call it a day uh, and just modify them as needed. So if these are my segments, let's go in here. So right now, if I hit A, it's going to give me an adaptive skin preview. So that's going to give me a Dynamesh and you can just start sculpting. However, you're going to want to go down here to adaptive skin and say make adaptive skin. But before I do that, I'm going to say density down to one, Dynamesh down to zero. So I hit A and then A again. It's going to give me this type of geometry. And this is actually my preferred type of geometry because we have these, these are all segmented, so I can actually use these cuts to my advantage perfectly. Uh, so let's do that. So the Z-Sphere I don't really need anymore, so we're gonna say Adaptive Skin, Make Adaptive Skin, and it doesn't, it's not in here, it's actually sitting out here in my tool palette. So I'm gonna go in here to Append that Skin Z-Sphere. Uh, this Z-Sphere I don't really need anymore. I can hide it if I want, if I think I need to go back to it, I can just go back to it, but um, Click your skin z-sphere, x symmetry is already turned on, and now I can use this to go through and start making my character. Um, first thing I'm going to do is hold down control shift, and we're going to switch over to select lasso. And if you select lasso on an edge, it's going to uh, just grab an edge ring. Uh, so at this point, you know, I can just go through here and just do this, or hold down control alt, and we can say delete hidden. Uh, then I can go through here, and I can say close convex hole, and click and pull, and drag. And that'll kind of cap that off for me. I'm going to grab both of these, hit control w, make it all one polygroup. Let's make that a little more obvious, control W. So now we have all these segments. Um, you could do like panel loops if you wanted to. This is kind of an interesting one. So you go in here to geometry, edge loop, and you could say, okay, give me some panel loops and don't nope, polish them off. So that'll go through and break these off. And then now you've got kind of these segments here, but I'm just gonna go through manually and split these up, I think. So we're gonna take this one here. Actually, let's just do it the easy way. Quick mirror and weld, uh, LSIM turned off. Geometry Modified Topology Mirror and Weld. We're going to go up here to Split, to Group Split. So now every polygroup gets its own subtool. And then I can just go through here and we'll do a, it was kind of, yeah, we'll do this again. So we're going to go in here to uh, Hover of an Edge, Spacebar, Close Convex Hole, click and pull out. And we're going to go down one, click and pull out down one, both sides. We're just basically capping off these segments. And these will make it easier for us uh, to pose later and also give us, uh, make it a little bit easier to sculpt on. And you can actually just tap once you've done it once that, that to the way you like. Um, you just call it a day. And now this is actually pretty decent geometry to sculpt on. So if you're not going to go crazy, you don't even have to Dynamesh this if you don't want to. You just control D or subdivide it. Uh, so now this one here, let's go this way. Uh, we can go ahead and like inflate this out, so deformation inflate. Uh, or if it was control W, you can go through here and say Q mesh polygroup ball, hold down shift and just pull along those surface normals. Uh, we can hit control D to subdivide and now we can just start moving this around. Um, and again, this is going to be kind of inflated around here. And if you wanted to do a preview, like hit D for dynamic and then shift D to turn that off, you can. Um, it's pretty it's pretty safe. I mean, we're not doing anything crazy. So essentially what these are going to do is they're going to kind of get thinner in the middle. So I'm going to hold down shift and we're going to kind of, let's drop the intensity down a bit. I'm going to kind of smooth in the middle. 
like so. And same thing for this one. We'll hit Control D to subdivide. I'm just going to kind of smooth those middles and then Alt tap on this one. And this one is going to be kind of fatter on this back end and then go to a, um, a taper. And in this case, uh, let's do this. Let's go through here and I'm just going to pull this to a point. And we'll give this a little bit more of an arc. Like so. And if you wanted to, you can inflate that as well. So now when we start hitting Control D, that'll subdivide. And again, you can just kind of pull out to that point and then go back here and inflate it like so. So get a little face dealer action and then grab this little part here and we'll go standard brush here and then I'll tap this one. Yeah, and I think we're, we're in pretty good shape. Um, of course, I need to turn on Z add, not RGB. And if you want to build up like between these little segments here, and we don't really need a ball group there, so we can just hit Control W. Um, you can do that, and it looks like, yeah, these kind of like butt up against each other. So we'll get kind of an insect, again, kind of like a centipede leg thing going. And these actually meet up a little bit better than what I've got here, so we'll go through and if these are too big, you can go through here, and you can just kind of smooth that transition down a little bit. Good enough. Uh, so now we got a leg. Now, uh, we can merge these together and not lose our subdivisions. If we've only uh, subdivided this, let's see, this got two, 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 two. Yeah, perfect. So uh, what we can do is we can just take all of these pieces and merge them down and they will automatically regenerate our subdivisions for us. You can do it manually, um, but also it'll do it automatically. So here we have subdivision levels for all these and we're back here. So you can go through here. Now what I would normally do is just sculpt these to finished and then use these to duplicate around. Um, you know, I guess we'll keep that for now. And this one, it looks like we need to these kind of shift dramatically, like this gets bigger. And it's going to have a front piece here we can start sculpting. And then, yeah, this carapace here. We can hit D for dynamic. Uh, and let's do a, um, do we have a poly group that's worthwhile on this one? Let's do a group by normals. No, let's do this. Group this one. Control Shift, tap that top one. Control Shift, tap this bottom one. Control W to poly group this one. Now we're going to uncrease all. Now increase a poly group, and that'll give us a nice fall off. We can say increase level one, smooth subdiv of two. So that'll kind of maintain those edges a little bit better. Um, also looks like it's kind of furry on the back ends there. Is that just the shading? It's a little bit hard to tell. But anyway. And again, these are all just, everything back here is just your array mesh. I can go through and I can just turn this off. And this is all we're really working on. Uh, so again, it's kind of a modular system we're setting up for our overall creature. And then the only thing we have left to sculpt is kind of the front. There's kind of a repeating carapace and then there's a little bit more of a specialized one up front that we may have to just sculpt that. And uh, that'll be, hmm. That might be easiest. Okay, so these are the basics of my creature brush I'm going to need. So let's go ahead and save this one as co pieces. Uh, and now let's go back to, there we go, doing an actual sculpt of this thing. So let's see if I have any decent reference. Okay, good. I got a side view and most of a front view. And that'll be perfect too because. Um, I only need half of it. So I think I've got what I need here. And we can also go through and sculpt that creepy face if we want to. Uh, yeah, okay, let's do that. Let's go out of edit mode here. Let's start with a uh, sphere. Drag it out, go into edit, make poly mesh 3D. Uh, I'm gonna kind of scale it like this and scale it like this. This will be the start of my face here. We'll zero mesh half, that size down to zero. And we're just gonna zero mesh this back down to a basic shape. Turn on X symmetry. And I'm going to do a deformation unify. And I think that's a good enough start. So let's go in here to texture, import. And I'm going to grab two. We're going to grab a front view and a side view. And you can save out your, um, 
your spotlights. You can save out your timelines if you want to, you know, save those. Feel free. So I'm going to move this one over here, and this will be kind of my front view here. So let's go back up here to our timeline. Movie timeline show. You guys know how to do that by now. Go ahead and set that one here. And then, actually, I probably should have done that separate secondly. Secondly. <laughs> so hit Z. Uh, so this is turned on, and we'll add this one. Oops. Add this one. So now we've got two. So we've got this one and this one. So let's, let's set this again. So we've got this face here, and we've got this face here. And this is just to make sure that we're somewhat accurate. So I'm going to go ahead and set this one here. And again, we can just work on that left side, or you know it would be better. Let's scoot this over. I'm going to work on the right side so we can see it. So again, drag off, drag on. And then here, we can kind of rotate this. You know what? We can actually just rotate it down. I'm going to call this one good enough. So let's take this one off, and then we'll go and reset this one. Ah, it still works. And this one here. So now I can go through here and I can start messing this out. So uh, we were doing very precise like Z modeler and getting these shapes. I'm going to be a little bit uh, rougher. I'm going to say subtool. We're going to duplicate this off, move it back, and I'm just going to very quickly just kind of put this uh, mass where it needs to go. Doesn't have to be perfect. I can always go through and we're going to detail it out later. I just want to make sure that kind of this front detail is taken care of. And then back here, we need to make sure that we can scale it out. Let's go to turn off X, go to unmesh mesh center, and then turn X back on. We can scale this out. Like so. So now uh, we have this, and let's, you know what, let's go ahead and dynamesh this. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take both of these, and I'm going to merge them down, and I'm going to say deformation unify. We'll do a quick mirror and weld. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop this off. So grab a little piece of it, Control Shift A, uh, split hidden. It's kind of interesting that it merged it down and kept it the same poly group. That doesn't usually happen. And then this one here, I'm going to do dynamesh. That's going to be under geometry dynamesh. And, um, you know, start as low resolution as you can. And, uh, oh, you know, that was a, kind of a bad idea because um, I need to reset up my cameras. I just like to work, like if I'm bringing something in from an external program, importing it will automatically set it to the scale I need for ZBrush. While I'm working in ZBrush, I like to um, make just make sure that I have uh, it set to unify as often as possible. So let's go ahead and take this piece here and kind of move this back a little bit. Move this forward so it's going to kind of go around the head here. Like so. And we're just going to smooth this out. We have smooth the intensity up and we're just going to smooth this out. Now if you wanted to, you could even Z-remesh at this point, but it's probably a little bit premature to do that. And let's also uh, make sure, so this is going around the head and then over here it looks like this needs to be like a hard shell. So we're going to go in here. We can use like clay buildup and kind of set this hard shell here. Clay brush, clay buildup. You can use Damien Standard if you can hold down Alt. You can kind of pull out um, here. Let's go ahead and turn on transparency with Ghost so we don't get uh, this head interfering too much. And we're just going to go through. We're going to pull out where these volumes need to be. Like so. And if we want to, we can also go in here and we can pinch and then move like so. So that's going to be kind of that basic overall shape. And we can go through here and make sure that it was working from all angles. Control drag and then yeah, go back through here and just kind of smooth these transitions out. So again, just going through here, making sure it's working in the round, and then we can go through and detail this out. So, And it kind of looks like it meets up, but it also looks like maybe it's like two separate pieces. It kind of looks the same, like the same piece, but I'm going to treat it as two separate pieces. So like this piece here is going to kind of go 
around and then it's going to kind of get divided and that'll just make it easier for me to treat these as two separate pieces honestly uh, okay so now I'm going to mask this let's go in here to mask lasso and instead of tilting the head down I could have uh, probably would have been a better idea if I would have gone through my spotlight and um, rotated the spotlight so it was straight uh, but you know what I think we'll be okay so we've got this piece here so this is going to be the big upper piece and then control tap here and this is going to be the big lower piece here and you know what these are all going to come out to kind of a a shell like this. So again, just kind of looking for, let's just z-scale this back. It's a gizmo and just, there we go. And if you ever get any pieces like this, sometimes turning on Sculptures Pro will help you kind of chew through those a little bit easier. Go ahead and turn that back off. So, if you want to know more on Sculptors Pro, again, on my station page, ZBrush 2018, what's new? You can see more on that. It's a whole playlist on that and more stuff. So this is the overall shape we're getting. So now we could go through and start panel loopsing this like we talked about earlier. So we got the outer shell. Let's do this. going to be our outer shell here. Standard brush, turn RGB back on, and we'll just kind of paint these segments here. Now, we don't have a ton of resolution, so it's not going to look great, uh, but we're really just using this, and let's go back here. Instead of doing a render and turning that poly paint down, I'm just going to go in here to color, white, RGB intensity down, color, fill, and just kind of knock that back a bit. Um, so now on top of here, we're going to need to you know what, I'm going to duplicate this off, go into solo mode, and I'm just going to take this shape here. So I'm going to hold down control, mask pin. I think this will just be easier to move around uh, separately. So we'll control mask this, and then again, go back to our trusty edge loop mask border, isolate this, delete hidden. And the cool thing about this now is if we Z remesh this, um, or we can do this. Let's before we do that, let's isolate this. Do Control Shift uh, S to shrink. We're going to shrink this in a bit, and then uh, let's go in here to that's a Control W, and we'll do another edge loop mask border. Or you know what? Let's do this. Let's do uh, just a masking on our border here. Invert that, and then we'll do a polish. So now we've got these two, delete hidden. I was like, I'm not even sure if I need to really, well, really I just need this outer ring, I think. So we're gonna just go ahead and delete hidden. We'll zero mesh half, depth size down to zero. Just get some nicer geometry. I think that'll work. And let's go ahead and do a quick, just a quick uh, slight polish by features. We got our geometry here. We can pull this out to get a little bit of a sharper point. All right, so now let's go back in here and we'll say Q mesh polygroup all or extrude polygroup all. You can pull this out and then again hold down, uh, just start pulling it out and hold down shift and you can pull on those surface normals. And that'll get us kind of that shape here. And we can pull this forward a bit. Although. round these bottoms and tops out. And you know what, we do have um, features here. I'm gonna put another feature in here just to keep these sides crease. So we're gonna say crease, edge loop complete, and just put a crease around these corners. So now when I do a polish by features, um, it'll keep those corners nice and sharp and just round out everything else. So now we can go to the back here. And again, you can move these around as much as you want and you can also, or you can always uh, polish them back out as needed. So here and then polish by features just kind of smooth them back out. I'm doing closed circle polish by features to maintain my volumes a little bit better. So 
So now if we go out of solo mode, this one we can actually, um, if I just subdivide this up, we can say, uh, go to our standard brush here, and we can just kind of paint that face on there if we want, uh, just as a kind of a stand, stand in, get us an idea. And then here's the shape, and then here is the shape. Now this shape, we may need to start dividing this up. Let's make sure this front piece here is about what I need it to be. It's like got this big piece here and then I kinda, let's clean this up just a little bit. So I'm gonna hold down Alt with my Damien standard. It's kinda got this level here and then this level up here and this here. And we're gonna split this carapace in half and then this here is gonna be kinda smooth. That's about that shape. Let's go ahead and stick this back here. We'll go ahead and maybe refine it from the side view a bit. Yeah, I think that's about right. This this might not be that fat. It kind of is a little bit skinnier. But from the from the other reference, it actually does kind of spill out just a bit. So you know what? Not everything's going to be perfect as far as like, you know, matching every reference. So you're just going to have to go through and make some judgment calls. All right, we'll call this good enough. So this is going to be the start of that carapace. Now, uh, we can make this a little bit easier to work with, or a little bit more precise, I should say. So let's go ahead and turn off our poly paint for now. And let's do this. Let's hold down Control Shift, and I'm going to go through. I'm going to slice. I'm going to know to our polyframe back on, but our line off. I'm just going to slice right through the middle of this object here. And we'll do a quick. Uh, I like this side better, so I'm going to do a quick mirror, mirror and weld. Uh, and now we got a nice slice, and this will be the start of. Oops. Dang it. Control W, make it all one poly group. And then Alt Tap once to give us a nice Bezier curve. And a slice isn't a mirrored operation, so you see it's a little different on both sides. So again, mirror, mirror, and weld. Now it's the same on both sides. Okay, that's better. And then on here, I want to have basically this upper carapace on its own thing. I don't need this interior space, I don't think. Hmm, no, this is just gonna be a shell. So I'm gonna take both of these, I'm gonna hold down Control, and we're gonna mask through here. And we're gonna make a shell out of this. And then I'm gonna figure out what that interior space is gonna look like. Yeah, I think that's how I need to go. Okay, might have messed up a little bit, but that's okay. Live and learn. Okay, so we've got this here. Let's do a quick edge loop mask border, or we can hit Control W and polish the poly group borders if it gives us any problems. So turn line back on and say, Edge loop mask border, I eh, did fine. And again, if you want to clean this up a little bit, smooth groups. I'm just kind of go through and smooth those poly groups, borders. And now this, I don't even need. So these two we can go ahead and get rid of. We can say delete hidden. Uh, you can zero mesh these and keep groups. Actually, let's do this too. Again, if I'm just looking for a shell. Oops, this, this, delete hidden. So this is all I'm looking for. Uh, and you could say, you know, zero measure, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero, half, half size down to zero, uh, and keep those together. If you did need those verts to line up along that border edge, if you don't, you can just separate this out and um, do it. But if you want to keep, maintain like kind of the same resolution, um, Let's also help this out a little bit here. Let's go through and again, just help it out. We'll say hover over an edge, and we'll say collapse, and we'll say collapse. And in fact, we can say, you know what, let me help you out even more. I'll collapse all those. So now Zero Mesher won't have a whole lot of questions when I go through here and collapse that. It won't try and build anything unnecessary in. I'll have a little bit of an easier time. So now I've got my two shells here. And now on this piece here, I'm gonna to need to flare that back end out quite a bit. 
So let's go through here. I'm going to hover over a face. We're going to say mask, polygroup all, invert that mask, uh, go to unmask mask center, and we can, again, just flare that back end out. So it can kind of have that whole, um, you know, this goes around it and then it goes back underneath that shell. And now while we have that mask, we can go through here and we can just use move. Now it's going to start stressing that geometry quite a bit, uh, but we can always zero mesh it. It's not a big deal. Like so. And underneath here is just going to be black or just dark. So I can just put a mesh back there and call it a day probably. So we'll call this okay-ish. And now this one, I'm going to go ahead and split these off. Again, this is another area where you can go through here and you can do a uh, geometry, edge loop, you can do panel loops. Let's turn loops down to one, polish off, um, ignore groups off because we do want to split these off into separate pieces. Double, make sure you have that turned on, and then we'll go ahead and just panel loops these out. If you want to, you can say elevation negative 100 so they won't go out. And again, polish down. There we go. So now, um, actually, panel loops, ignore groups, double loops, thickness, oh, bevel, down to zero. There we go. So now you're getting uh, just this extruder. You can hold down control shift, control shift, a, and this is what you're getting. So instead of going through here and manually doing Q mesh or Q brush or anything like that, uh, you can use panel loops. Um, although, you know, you can also just go through here, you can say split hidden, and now you can say Q mesh, polygraph ball, pull in a little thickness, go ahead and display properties flip, maybe pull this out a little bit, and then go to the exact same here. So Q mesh out a little bit, and then hold down shift and pull in, and then you can avoid uh, splitting. And then there you go, you got your your little carapace pieces. Now before I did this I probably should have straightened these lines out but it's easy enough to go through and just alt tap between them and call it a day. So uh, now this stress geometry here let's go through and do another polish by features here and here if we want to see what this is kind of going to look like we can go through and do a crease polygroup crease level of two smooth of both three and we can kind of start smoothing these out. And that's kind of kind of what we're getting there. Uh, yeah, move Accu. And in fact, if you ever if I ever say anything and you're like, "What are you talking about?" Um, usually on my YouTube channel, you can just type in move Accu, and there's a whole video on it. But essentially, it's just move brush here. So if I go into my move brush, it's going to go kind of blobby. If I go into move Accu, it's going to go to a point. Uh, and all that is is just underneath brush and AccuCurve's turned on. So here we can pull out. Um, actually, why it's not is because we don't have enough geometry on here. Um, so if we go through here and we say move Accu's here, it's pointing out the points, and then move is like a blobby move, and then move Accu is a corner move. Uh, okay. Cool. Um, unity, fur and unity. Uh, I suppose I would, uh, unless it has a, I don't really use unity that much, but uh, if it has a fur plugin, I might use that. Um, but if I was doing fur externally, it'd probably be hair cards, I'm assuming. I really don't know. Let's go into solo mode here. And if we want to add a little more resolution, since this is getting quite stressed, Let's go through here and we'll say insert multiple edge loops and we'll just go ahead and drop these in here. And we'll just do the same thing on the back here. And we can isolate these polygroups, hit control W. Actually, let's do auto groups so we get a different one on the inside and outside. There we go. That'll be a little less stress. We can hit D for dynamic. We can sit, uh, let's do uncrease all and then crease PG. And then again, crease level of two, some sort of a three. And that'll be kind of how this is going. And also through here, we probably need to crease this line. So I'm going to do Shift D. We're going to go ahead and say crease this edge, because it is a very precise edge that it has. Crease that edge. So now, when I'm going through and doing this, we can go through and make sure that 
these corners are where they should be. So now uh, we got this, uh, but you know what? Let's go ahead and just do this face real quick. It's easy enough. So I'm gonna take this head here and I think this is fine. We, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we can just keep the subdivision levels. So in this one, I am gonna use render. So I'm gonna go down here to render, fade opacity and drop this back. And now we'll just go through here with our clay brush, make sure RGB is turned off, or we can just go through and mask. So we're gonna mask where the nose is gonna go and we're gonna make sure she has a nose. And smooth, we'll turn RGB off on our smooth brush here. Okay, good. And we don't want smooth groups actually. Smooth, regular, RGB turned off. There we go. So here, and again, I'm just gonna pull up this reference up here. And the eyeballs, you know, we need to, let's go ahead and go in our clay brush and we'll kind of push these back a little bit and then we'll pull that brow out just a bit. And we're just looking for that face shape. We're not doing anything super fancy. Um, we can go through and we can add that. We need to give her a chin, poor thing. Let's go ahead and mask this out. So. For the profile of the face, we need to have a chin, and then also like the the tooth cylinder, we need to add in here. Go into solo mode here, and if you want to, you can temporarily turn this off just so we can have a little bit better idea how our face is going. So we'll go ahead and smooth this out. And if you want, you can go through here and you can like clip, curve, and smooth back. And like we did before uh, with Aang, it was, we did Dynamesh, but we can also just go through here. And since we're not moving these things around crazy, we can just use subdivision. And then if you wanted to, you could Ziri mesh this. So let's do Shift Z. And we didn't have perspective turned on for either of these. Which is okay, I think. So now we'll turn our poly paint back on. It's still pretty close. Then we go through here with our Damien standard brush. And I'm just going to, I'll give her a closed mouth. So I'm gonna hold down Alt to kind of pull out. Or we'll go through here with our clay brush first. So I'm gonna kind of build up where the lips are gonna go. Yeah, let's turn that poly paint off. It's a little bit distracting. There we go. So D, middle of the eyeballs down, is going to be about where the mouth is gonna go. There's a the corner of the lips, like so. And then again, on this upper lip, we can go ahead and pull this out. And then we can pull out this lower lip here, and we can mask. Let's go in here to mask lasso. If we want this upper lip to kind of be sitting on top of our lower lip. You can do that, and you're going to see the mask looks a little bit faded because our uh, fade opacity on our render properties is turned up. So that's going to affect that. So we'll go ahead and push this lower lip back a little bit. Kind of push this in here. And I'm going to drop my Z intensity down just a bit, and we'll go ahead and smooth this out. So. Underneath his nose, we'll have a bit of a, you know, a little filter in here so we can kind of dip this down and pull this back up. And again, if we were dynameshing this, we'd be just be dynameshing as we go. And I think she had kind of a smile on her face. So we'll kind of lean into that a little bit. And then clay brush here, we'll kind of build this up a little bit. And above the cheeks a little bit. And then clay brush here. And since we're running out of time, I'm going to lean into just kind of painting uh, this face to give me what I'm looking for. I'm not gonna, I mean, honestly, what I would probably do and what I should do is just go take the, um, the base model of the female and do that. You know what, let's do that. This is gonna be easy enough. So when, in, when you need in your pinch, let's go into uh, the comma key here. Let's go into tool. Yeah, we can grab this female head. I'm going to do a uh, 
Uh, let's go ahead and just merge this down. Brush, create insert mesh, new. Go back here. And we'll just go ahead and drag this out. And we're going to say split mass points, shift D to turn off dynamic because our other object had dynamic turned on. And then make sure our features are generally matched up. say, you know what, we'll keep this all together maybe. Now, uh, we don't have ears on this, so we can go through, and easy easy thing to do would be to shift to smooth it out. Uh, you can also just take this, we'll go ahead and say uh, split hidden, and you can also go through, let's do a quick group by normals, I'm going to take this bottom piece out here, and you can zero mesh this results if you're so inclined. So if you wanted to do like a um, Sculptures Pro and just get rid of the ears completely, and then uh, we have X symmetry turned on. So we can go through here and we can say zero mesh half and just get some new geometry going. Oof, let's do same, crank that adapt to size up a bit so we can maintain some of those edge loops around the eyeballs. And that'll, uh, you know, kind of get rid of those. You can also go through and you can give it just new topology. So if we don't have subdivision history on here, you can try doing this. Let's say, let's go through here. Let's do a mask perfect circle. Actually, a perfect circle we don't really need. Let's do some mask circle. Mask circle. We'll hit Control W, and then we're going to isolate this. We're going to say, um, where is it? This. I'm trying to remember. Let's say BTO. There's a, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to remember, and maybe you can just like zero mesh this half. You can just kind of locally zero mesh. Kept giving me new geometry, so we'll take all these. Okay, that'll work. And now, uh, I do need some sort of uh, filler in there. So I'm going to give her this all separate out. Yeah, so it's all separated. So now we can go through here. Let's go ahead and add um, some subdivisions here. And here, we can use this as just a preliminary paint. So I'm going to go through here, RGB turned on. We can use this to kind of dictate where that masking needs to go. We'll go back in here to render. Fade opacity to zero. And now uh, we have an idea of where the stuff needs to go. Of course, this is easy enough just to kind of go through and mask. So let's do this. Let's say give you basic material two. Go into our materials here. And I'm going to turn on uh, wax modifiers just a little bit. 
on this one. The fuse we're going to crank up. And then uh, we're just going to fill this with a white or kind of a chalky mRGB color fill object. And then now we can go through here and we can mask. And let's do Control D. So kind of follows the nose up over the eyebrows here. Let's un blur that mask a little bit, then tighten it up, invert this, and then we'll just grab a kind of a darker a little less saturated than that. And then here is this gonna be black, so standard brush, RGB turned on, and we can just go. And we'll grab some lipstick. There's nothing you can mask as well, uh, but I think we'll be uh, okay. And I think I've got enough to kind of go through and do some some marketing. So I guess I'll call it a quits here. Hopefully I didn't stomp on anybody else's um, stuff. Cool. Uh, yeah, if you can put in a... I'm not sure what's going on with that. You can put in a um, ticket to Pixel Logic. And you know what? Let's also take this ambient up a little bit here. And I'm going to turn off RGB for my smooth because I'm just going to smooth the heck out of her face over here. And also these teeth I don't necessarily need. And even these eyes. Go ahead and mask pin. W, go to mesh mesh center. That's a little bit creepy. Let's go ahead and move these back. Just say toy plastic. We'll do dark first. Fill object. And then a little bit lighter. She has very weird blue eyes. Of course, there's a lot of faces I can choose from from here, but we'll stick with what we know. So I'm going to go a dark blue first. And then we're going to go very light blue, almost like a lavender. see a pupil, although I only got one screenshot of this, so it's got a little bit lighter. And 
And then finally, the easiest part, let's go through here. Uh, you know what, we just dynamesh this. Sorry, material's fine. All right. Whew. So we have the beginnings of this. And then we also have the body part pieces that we can start creating the rest of the body here. And then, of course, we got our little expressionless um, avatar guy, and we'll call it a day. Cool. Um, I mean, yeah, if you have any uh, last minute questions, go ahead. I'm kind of done working on this, I think. Um, but yeah, I can, I can stay up for a little bit longer. Again, assuming I'm not stomping on somebody else's, uh, presentation. Usually nobody goes right after me, so, um, I feel semi-safe. And uh, this case, you know what, we can even do this. Let's say control N. And I got this one here. So we need to bring in a little bit of color reference, I think. So we'll go in here to texture. Uh, just do another texture imp. Oh, we already got this. So we have this texture already. So really quickly, just go through here. We'll grab that plain 3D, uh, make poly mesh 3D in this one. I remember the hotkeys now. So we're gonna go in here to texture map, load this one up. And then we're going to go hold down uh, poly paint, shift poly paint from texture. Of course, MRGB needs, needs to be on. Uh, oh, shift poly paint from texture. There we go. And then turn the texture back on. And we can pull from this. If you want to make sure you're just getting the color information, go in here to flat color. I should have said that earlier. Uh, shift S. And then now we'll go through here and do a quick color pass. Basic material, you know, let's take basic material and we'll copy it and we'll grab dots and we'll say paste. And then now we can go through here, we can say uh, C, MRGB color, fill object. There you go. And then under basic material, um, I guess I suppose that'll work. Close enough. Uh, a little confused. This title video session, I seem to be looking at submissions. It's extreme nonetheless. Yeah, no, that wasn't me. That was, uh, <laughs> I forgot to change the name when I came on here. And on here, um, upload a file, ZBrush file, and a link in the description if it's possible to have a test to make a better looking model. Um, I don't see a link in the description anywhere, but um, let's see here. I'm trying to think if I have anything. <laughs> I don't know that I have anything. Most of my stuff is technique and engine really, or uh, you know, kind of production-y, kind of technique-y stuff. So, but anyway, if it's any use to you as far as like, you know, going through here and you can check this one out. And also this one might be a little bit easier to kind of navigate is my RStation page has a lot of the same content. And uh, if you go into like, say the boot tutorial, 
there's some extra stuff in here. Like here's, you can click on the videos. Here's here's how to make a boot. And then you also have stuff like this where you can go through and here's a little JPEG to kind of walk you through the process as well. So that might be useful. But also if you're trying to catch up on like new features, I, every every year I'll put out a little playlist like this. So, you know, Dverse 2020, what's new? 20, 20 videos or 40 videos on that or whatever. So that can get you caught up relatively quickly. But of course, if you want the basics, it's the ZBrush for ideation. We'll get you caught up with all the, the basics there. Cool. All right, everybody. Thanks for showing up. I'm going to be streaming on my channel on Thursday. If you want to catch the rest of this, we'll finish it out and we'll pose it out and we'll get the get the weird stalactite cave going and, you know, pose out this creepy creature and maybe do Aang's body and have him standing there. We'll see how we want to frame this, but uh, essentially this kind of deal right here we'll go ahead and make and uh yeah cool awesome thanks everybody i'll head out as soon as i figure out how to turn off